Your word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. It is alive, an anchor in the storm, a compass in the wild. Your word is a foundation built with truth, unmoving and undiminished. By its light, all is seen and known. On your word, we stand. Oh, well, good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, man, welcome back to this series called Set in Stone. And I love this series. I love it as we talk about setting our lives in the stone and the foundation of Christ and living our lives for His name and for His glory and talking about God's Word and His truth. And you know, in 2019, we've all probably been setting New Year's resolutions or maybe breaking New Year's resolutions. But, but the fact is this, we all kind of have a direction for our life. We're all kind of thinking, you know, I want to lose weight or, I, you know, I want to, you know, better finances or whatever it is, more time with the family. And, and all these things are good and they're fine and they're wonderful. But what we've said is this, if we can get this relationship right, it's going to impact everything else. And so in beginning here of 2019, we just want to say, hey, we want to be set in stone in my relationship with the Lord. Not that I'm perfect, but I'm growing. I'm growing deeper in His Word and His truth, and I'm living my life for the glory of God. And so we talked about this in this series. We talked about how do we know the Bible is true and how is it relevant for our lives. And if you've missed either one of the past couple of weeks, go back and listen. And today we're talking about how do I study this? How do I know this? How do I live this out every day in my life? Because God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. You are not here by accident. And God wants to use you in a mighty way for his glory. And God is saying, hey, I want you to follow me. I want you to know me. I want you to trust me. Hey, this is an opportunity for us to set our lives in the stone of Christ and in his word. God has a plan or purpose for you. Last summer, we were taking a family vacation with with our kids. And so our kids were just coming back from... Rolling Hills Kids Camp. They were getting back on Monday. And, and I just encourage you, if you're a parent in the room, you know, getting your kids to Rolling Hills Kids Camp or student camp, it makes such a difference. And so they were coming back on Monday morning, and we were going to head down to the beach in South Carolina. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, we've got to get on the road because we are going to head there, but we've got to go through Atlanta. And anybody knows, right, if you're going through Atlanta, if you hit it like 4 o'clock or after, you can just like camp out because you're sitting in traffic the whole time. And so in my mind, I'm like, all right, guys, let's do it. Let's hustle. Let's get together and get our stuff packed. And we're going to be heading through Atlanta, and we're going to get there. We're going to get there tonight, and we're going to head down to the beach. So everybody's excited. We're getting everybody ready, getting them in the car. We get in the car, right? We plug in, you know, where we're going into our little navigation thing on our phone. We kind of get it set, and we're off, and we're doing great. So we leave like at 9 o'clock, and we're heading over, and I'm like, okay, you know, we just get over the mountain, go through Chattanooga, get through Atlanta, and we're golden. Well, we're coming along. We're doing great. We get over the mountain, heading into Chattanooga, and all of a sudden, navigation, which we hadn't even thought about for a while. It's just been kind of over there, right? All of a sudden, it says, Delay ahead. We're like, what? You know, delay ahead. You're like, oh no. And so we grab waves. They're like, we're looking up there and it's like all red, like total red. And then it says, delay three hours. Like, what? <laughs> three hours? Like, what are you talking about now? All of a sudden, in my head, I'm going, oh no. Now we're going to be here three hours. Now we're going to get to Atlanta and then we're going to be camped out in Atlanta, right? We're not going to get into like two or three in the morning. This is crazy. This is ridiculous. And so, Lisa starts looking over different apps. We're looking at navigation, looking at different maps. I'm thinking about people I know in Chattanooga, like, how can I get around here on 24? How can I get past this? And, and so we're trying to figure all this out. And then it comes up and says, you know, uh, alternate route. I'm like, yes, alternate route. Okay, this is going to be good. And then it starts going into, like, all these, like, different alternate routes. And I'm looking, I'm going, I have no idea, you know, where this is taking me. And now we're coming up, and it's like, you know, five miles ahead. And so I'm like, okay, I got, you know, three or four minutes, and now I've got to make a decision here. And we're getting up there, and finally it says, take this exit. And we can see cars are stopped. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So we take the exit. We go off the exit. It comes back over the interstate. I'm calling people. I'm like, do you know where we are? And they're like, no, I don't know where you are. And I'm like, great, thank you, you know. And so here we are somewhere outside of Chattanooga, driving down these back roads, and it's telling us, turn right, turn left, you know, 500 feet, turn right. So we turn right, turn left, and now all of a sudden, you know, one of the kids has to go to the bathroom. I'm like, there's no bathrooms or anywhere around here. There's no gas stations. 
we're just got to go. We're driving. And pretty soon we took a ride, and now we're going along, and I can see through the trees that were parallel to the interstate. And I can see all the cars that are backed up on the interstate, and I'm like, whoa, wow, hold on. Maybe this thing works, you know? I'm mean, like, I don't know, but here we are. We're cruising along. And then it says, you know, enter the interstate in 500 feet. And so sure enough, we come up, and we just get right back on the interstate. I look back. And there had been some construction that had happened, you know, and all that. And we just got right in front. We just went right on. And I was like, yes, you know, this thing works. I mean, like, you know, most of the time I thought it was going to lead me away. But it, it works. I was listening to it. I thought, this is great. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. God wants you to know in your life, God wants you to succeed. God wants you to be conformed to the image of Christ. So you know the goal. You know the direction. And then along the way and along the journey, there's going to be some things that are going to happen. But God says, I want you to listen to my word. And there may be a time you take a detour and you're like, I don't know. And God's going, trust me in this. And you may end up saving not just three hours of your life, but you may end up saving three years of your life, right? Or six years of your life. And some of you are like, well, I've been there. I know. I didn't live it that way. And there I went off on my own. And now I'm coming back and I'm saying, I'm going to follow this. <laughs> I want to listen because God's got a plan for me. God's got a purpose for me. And I'm going to reorder my life around his will and his direction and his plan and his purpose. God's purpose for you is to be conformed to the image of his son. And for you and I to know him and to trust him and to follow him. Man, that's where life comes alive Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. And we begin to trust God in that. Man, life, life is truly alive. I want us to pray and then we'll dive into God's word. Father, open our hearts, open our eyes to your truth today. Let us hear from you, God, and let us reorder our lives to your plans and your purposes. So speak, Lord Jesus, and guide us today. In your name we pray, amen, amen. If you have a Bible, open with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews New Testament, all right, so it's kind of back there toward the back of the Bible uh, there in the New Testament, so you got, you know, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, then Hebrews right there. If you don't have a Bible, we've got some Bibles for you in the back, love for you to grab one as we dive into God's Word today, but Hebrews chapter 4, pick up here in verse 12, Hebrews 4 verse 12. 12. It says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him to whom we must give an account. So look at this. It says, for the word of God, right, is alive and active. This is God's word. If you're taking notes today, I want you to see those two words, alive and active. This isn't some dead book. This isn't some, like, great collection of historical stories, right? I mean, it is historically accurate, but this isn't some dead language. This book is alive. It's alive, and God speaks to you. Through his word. You know, every year, every year, right? The Bible's the number one best selling book of all time. Every year, the Bible's the number one best selling book. Why? Because God speaks. Do you know how many books have been written? I mean, throughout the centuries, you know how many books are here and gone, and you know, you can go to libraries, there's books there, and they're gonna be here, and they'll be like, oh, great, that's a great book. Everybody's into that book. And then, you know, a few years later, like, nobody ever heard of that book, right? It's, it's, it's gone. This book is alive. <laughs> this book speaks. This book changes us because God speaks through his word. Here's the fact. God created the world and God created you. So God creates the world. He knows how it works. And God creates you. And he puts you here. And he's like, I know. I, I can see the pitfalls. I can see the challenges. I can see the construction. I can see the wrecks. I see this. And I love what he says. The Bible speaks to the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. You know, the Greeks always believed everything came from here, came from your heart. All your motivation, your reasoning, the decisions that you make. And that's exactly what God's word says. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, the spiritual and the physical. And it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. It's not just the things we think, it's the attitude. It's, 
It's our motivation. We may can do the right thing on the outside or the wrong thing, but what's our motivation behind that? What's the attitude behind that? Why are we doing the things that we do? And then I love in verse 13, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. You know how you're driving home sometimes and you know, the radio's on and all of a sudden they say, traffic alert, you know, let's go to our eyes in the sky. And, you know, here's, here's it is. And then you got the guy in the helicopter who's up there and he's looking at all, everything that's happening. And, and he's like, hey, you know, there's a wreck on 65, you know, take an alternate route. Well, yes, thank you. God sees the whole big picture. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what next year holds. But we know the one who holds tomorrow. <laughs> We know the one who holds next year. We know the one who knows us and our life. Nothing in all creation is hidden from him. And, and everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. One day, every one of us is going to stand before God. Every one of us. Every person who's ever lived. And he's going to ask us two questions, right? He's going to say, one, what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? And we're all going to have to give an answer. What do we do? Do we just say, oh, he's a good man, or a prophet, or hey, yeah, you know, it was my parents' faith, or they were in the church, or whatever, or, or he was the Lord of my life. Jesus is the Lord of my life. And then he's going to say, what did you do with what you were given? What, what did you do with the resources, the time, the talents, the ability? What did you do with what you were given? And we're all going to have to give an account. So are we living our lives for the glory of God? Are we using what God has entrusted to us? And God says, I want you to know it. You're not just alone in this world. I will speak to you. Here's the thing. The two most underutilized tools, I believe, in the Christian life. The two most underutilized tools. Number one, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I mean, imagine this. The Holy Spirit. Right? If you go to the book of Romans, the Holy Spirit is the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It's the same spirit in you. When you become a Christ follower, God places his Holy Spirit within you. You have the power, you have the discernment, the, the wisdom, and you guys know this, right? That the, the Spirit will speak to you in that still, small voice. And you're starting to make a decision, and you have this check in your spirit, like, eh, yeah, I shouldn't do that. And God's like, yeah, I'm telling you, right, don't go there. And you're like, uh, and, and you can go there, and you can get way off base, right? You can gotta sit in traffic for a long time, or the Spirit prompts you and goes, hey, go this way. Take this. Call them. Pray for them. Do that. So the Holy Spirit, the second one is this, the Bible, God's Word. The Bible, God's Word. I believe this is so underutilized in the Christian walk today. Because here's what happens a lot of times, right? We think, well, this is the Holy Bible, right? And the Holy Bible, we've got to keep it over here on the shelf. We've got to take care of it. We've got to protect it. And God's going, no, I gave it to you to use. I gave it to you to read. It's okay to underline. It's okay to write notes. It's okay. I want you to use it. And sometimes we get intimidated by it. Sometimes we go, well, I don't know where to start. Or sometimes we go, well, I don't understand it. And so if I don't understand it, then I'm not going to kind of stay away from it. And God's going, no, 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 no. Dive into it. it Here's the thing about the Bible. The Bible is God's love letter to you. Do you remember being in middle school or high school or college and, and, and like getting a love note, you know? And, and you get this note from, you know, somebody else and, and, and you start to read it. Don't you remember you analyzed every word of that, right? I mean, you're like, like me. What does that mean by like? Do they really like me? And you lay in bed at night and think, they like me like me or they like not like me? Or like, what do they say? You're so sweet. What, what does that mean, right? Like, I'm so sweet. You're so nice. I mean, am I nice like sister, brother nice, or am I like nice? Like, you know, you, you would think about those things. Now, think about that. You're analyzing that because you are thinking, what are they thinking? I want to know. This is God's love letter to you. That's why we study it. We're like, oh, what's God saying to me? I mean, you could open the front and put, to Jeff, you know, love God. And then you start to read it differently. Then you start to kind of dive in and go, oh, wow, okay, God's speaking to me. So, so how do you study the Bible? How do you study the Bible? You know, first of all, you have a plan, all right? A lot of people just kind of go, okay, well, I'm going to do my Bible reading. I'll just kind of open to wherever I'm going to go. I'm gonna, okay, here we go. No, have a plan. Don't take things out of context. So have a plan. Now here, 
At Rolling Hills, we take a daily step, right? We have the Rolling Hills app. And uh, if you don't have it yet, download it on your phone. I think we've, you know, like 2,700 people have downloaded it on their phone. But there's like this great thing right there at the bottom right-hand corner. And we have a Bible reading plan. And as a church, we're reading through the entire New Testament this year, 2019, and Psalms and Proverbs. And so jump in. Tomorrow we'll start with Mark chapter 1. So you can already kind of get ready for that. But you can read through, and Saturday and Sunday gives you a chance to catch up. But have a plan. Have a plan like, I'm going to read this. I want to study this. I want to study it in context. I want to see what God's Word is saying. Now, here's an awesome part. Sometimes what happens is we'll miss a day, and then we'll go, well, off track, you know, well, forget it. I'm not going to do it, right? And just kind of move on because I messed up. There's an incredible word called grace. It's awesome, right? So, so if you miss a day, it's okay. Jump back into it. Here's the thing. If you miss a meal, you don't go, okay, well, I'm just going to give up on eating. You know, I'm <laughs> like, forget it. You know, no, you're going to be like extra hungry, aren't you? You're going to be like, I'm going to dominate that next meal. So, hey, when you come to it, Say, hey, I missed it, but I'm going to jump back into it. So here's four R's that I just want to encourage you about as you study the Bible. The first one is reach. Reach. So every morning when you wake up, first thing, reach for your Bible. Just reach for your Bible. Before you reach for the snooze button, okay, before you reach for your phone to check social media and see if you missed out on anything, you know, last night that happened on Instagram or something like that, before you reach for your coffee, Okay, maybe all the coffee drinkers are like, hold on, we're taking this too far right now. You know? so maybe you need the coffee to study the Bible. All right, okay, go ahead. I'll give you that one. All right, but reach for God's word. Reach and just say, I'm going to reach. I'm going to spend some time here. You know, whether it's on your iPad or your, your, you know, your phone or whether it's just, you know, the hardback copy. Like, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to spend the first few minutes of my day in God's word. I'm just going to reach for God's word. I'm going to reach. Here's the second one. Rely. Rely. Before you start to read, right, as it comes up and I'm going to read Mark chapter 1 or whatever, before you start to read, rely. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Holy Spirit, open my eyes, open my heart. What do you want me to see today? Because a lot of times we'll just kind of dive into it and we're off and running and we're like, I'm going to be late, so I've got to dive into this and let's go. But take a moment, deep breath, Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Holy Spirit, speak to me. Here's the third R. Read. <laughs> Read. Now, you can listen, right? There's a little button if you want to listen. Listen to the scriptures. You can do that. If you don't like to read it, that's fine. But either way, but what happens a lot of times is instead of reading, we skim, right? Because we're going, I'm going to be late for work. I got to get the kids' lunch packed. I got to get, and so, you know, we're just kind of like, okay, I got to get through this and move on. Now, the goal is not to get the check mark, right? The, the goal is to hear from God, <laughs> The goal is to say, God, what do you want to teach me? So take the minute, take the time to read it. And then the fourth is this, respond. God, what are you saying to me? God, how do I apply this in my life? God, what do you want me to do as I read and heard from you or listened to you this morning? Uh, that is so important. Because I believe God will speak. I keep a journal right next to my Bible. And, and it, it, so many times, I mean, God just like, I'm reading and it's like, okay, I got to write this down. I got to write this down. And I just write these notes down. And then I go back and look like a year from now, you know, and I would go, oh yeah, that's what God was saying to me. God, God's faithful. God's speaking. God's moving. God always, you know, the word of God will not return void. God's always speaking. And what's amazing is this word is so alive and active. It may be a passage that you've read before, but it's like an onion. You know, you start to read in a different season of life, and you're like, oh, there's something deep. There's a truth here. There's a, something God has for me, even though I've seen that passage before. And maybe tomorrow or the next day you're reading Mark 1 or Mark 2 or Mark 3 or Mark 4, and you're going, miracles. God still does miracles. God, please do a miracle in my life. God, do a miracle in the life of my friend. God, you are the miracle worker. And you write those things down as God speaks to you. The navigators, they, they have this thing to get a strong handle on God's word with this. Hear, read, study, memorize, meditate, and apply. And I love that kind of hand illustration, right? Hear, read, study, memorize, meditate, and then apply. And that's how I can get just a strong handle on God's word. If I, if I just hear the word and I'm trying to hold on to it, or if I hear and kind of read it, but if I start to hear or read, if I study it, get those four R's going, then I can start to get a firm handle. Okay, 
I don't have to be intimidated by this. This is God's love letter to me. I can listen, I can learn, and I can apply. Now, there's some tools that it's important for us to have as we study God's Word. The first is this, the importance of having an age-appropriate Bibles for you and your children. And having an age-appropriate Bible. You know, when I was a kid, um, I remember I didn't have a tricycle just like this. I had a big wheel. And my big wheel, it rocked. I mean, I, I could go anywhere on that big wheel. I went all over the place. I loved that big wheel. But when I got into high school, and all the guys from the neighborhood were like, hey, Leah, let's go ride the trails and stuff like that. I didn't go, okay, let me go get my big wheel, right? I was like, no, I need to go get a bike. <laughs> I need to have something legit because I'm going to go ride. And, and we get that in our minds. But, but sometimes with the Bible, we're like, okay, well, I had this Bible when I was a little kid. And, and, and I still have that Bible. And that's great. It's great. But at some point, you start to go, okay, I need a Bible that's going to speak to me. I need a Bible that's written kind of in adult language that I can understand. But it's also true for our children. As our children mature, as they grow up, you know, we don't want to be the parents who, hey, you're a high school kid, go get the, you know, tricycle out. You know, they're like, come on, mom, come on, dad, you know, give it to me. And sometimes kids, they stay away from the Bible because all they have is like this kid's Bible. So for us to look as parents and say, I want to be sure I'm giving them the tools that they can learn and study God's Word. I, I want to just show you a few. I brought some of these uh, today for you. Um, this is a Bible, like, when babies are born, I remember uh, when we had our first child, Grace, and she's 14 now, I can't believe that, how that happened, but, but anyway, our pastor, my pastor from growing up, him and his wife, we had a baby shower in San Antonio, and they gave us this rhyme Bible at, at the baby shower, and I can tell you, I, we used to read this to Grace when she was like in the womb, you know, we're reading, and then when they're young and just listening to these Bible stories, and it rhymed. And so this is great. You know, if you have this, a baby, just to get them listening to God's Word. We love to give that as, as, you know, when we go to showers, baby showers or something like that. This is a Jesus storybook Bible. And, and it, as kids get a little bit older, and you can sit down with them. I love reading with my kids, you know. Now they're older and I'm doing math homework and social studies, you know. But whenever younger, I'm reading books. Then, but I wanted to read God's word to them. I wanted them to hear it at a young age. And, and, and so reading to them. Now, when they get to be in elementary school, though, it's like, okay, that, that's great. But now I need something. I need the word of God. And every child here who's baptized, you know, just like we celebrated this morning. They, when they're baptized, they get this, the Kids Quest Study Bible. And, and I love this. I love this Bible. And so, you know, if your children, they don't have a Bible, then be able to go and get a Bible for them. When they're in middle school, when they're in middle school and they're baptized here, we, we give them, if they're a girl, a, a girl's teen study Bible. And it has places on the outside to write kind of journal entries. If they're a boy, you know, and they're in middle school, they're in high school, and they get this, you know, teens, guys, Revolution Study Bible, and it, it's great. You know, it had, talks about different books in the Bible and it has descriptions and different things for them to learn from. You know, as an adult, if, when adults are baptized here, we give every adult a Bible. And it, it's a Bible that looks a lot like mine that I use on Sunday mornings, um, but it's a thin line you can keep with you, hold with you, and it's, it's fantastic. So, you know, maybe God's calling you to be baptized, and we say, hey, we want you grounded in the Word of God. We've got Bibles in the back that we give away, and they're, and they're paperback, and the reason is because we want you to write in it. And we want you to, like, on Sunday morning when you hear, and hey, underline, you know, Hebrews 4, 12 through 13, or if God says something to you, write it down, but put your name in it. Then there's, like, the NIV study Bible, right? Then there's, like, the big boy Bibles, you know, like, they're, like, massive, the life application Bibles. But these, these are great in the fact that they've got these notes down at the bottom. And so as you're reading, you're like, oh, okay, that that makes sense. Okay, I didn't know what that meant before, and now I, I get it. And, and so you start to get, hey, i got a study Bible to use. And, and yet all these Bibles, are, they're great and they're effective, but, but you want to come back and say, I need something that's more age-appropriate to me. Now, what else is important when you're studying the Bible is the right translation. And the most popular translation out there is, is the King James Version. And the King James Version is great. It's great. It, it, but here's the thing. Sometimes it's hard to understand, right? You're like, you're like back in the King James, which was written in 1611. It was taken, you know, from the Hebrew and the Greek. So it's accurate, but it's still like back from 1611. So you're going, thou shalt not. You're like, 
well, I don't say that anymore, you know, like, I mean, he smote him, you're like, he smote who, you know, it's like, what are you talking about smoting people, you know, and so it's important to kind of go, okay, do I understand this? And sometimes people go, well, I don't understand that, so I'm going to kind of stay away from that, and maybe look at your translation. There's the NIV, the New International Version, there's the RSV, there's the ESV, and, and all these are accurate, back to the original text, the Hebrew and the Greek, uh, you can get a new King James Version, but a way that you go, man, I start to understand this. This makes sense. This is God speaking to me in my language. Now, there's some other tools, other tools for deeper Bible study. And, and here's some things just to kind of mark down. Number one, like a concordance. Or concordance. Now, most Bibles will have this in the back. And, and it's a concordance. It kind of tells you different scripture passages. When we first planted the church, uh, we were meeting in an apartment clubhouse right off Carruthers over there doing a Bible study on Thursday nights. And, and one day I was in the workout center at the clubhouse and I'm running on the treadmill and there was a guy running next to me and I looked over and he had an Indiana shirt on. And I go, oh, did you go to the University of Indiana? He goes, yeah. He said, I was, a, I was a cheerleader there. And he said, in fact, when Bobby Knight threw the chair, he missed me by 10 feet. And I go, oh yeah. So Bobby Knight, if y'all don't know, is a basketball coach, right? He, had some anger issues, but anyway, so Bobby Knight was there, and he's like, you know, so I was there, that I've been a cruise director, I just got back, and you know, I was living in the Caribbean, and now I'm back here, and I'm like, well, hey, we just planted a church, would love for you to come, and he's like, sure, I don't know anybody, I'll, I'll come to church, and so he came, and uh, then we said, hey, come, we have a community group, we had one community group then, and it's at our apartment, come on over, so he came the first night, and we had this great Bible study, and he didn't say a word. He's just, I'm like, okay, great. This guy's thinking, you know, like, what in the world? The next week, he comes back, and he's like, hey, guys, I uh, went and bought a Bible. Hey, guys, you guys all had Bibles, so I went and got one. I went over to this Lifeway place. Anybody heard of it? We're like, yeah, we all heard, you know, <laughs> we love it. You know, it's great, you know. And so, so he's like, this is awesome. Well, what was neat was to watch this guy in our group, Dave Sherson. He comes over to Tyson. And he goes, hey, can I see your Bible, man? And he's like, yeah. He goes, look at this. This is great. He goes, you got tabs to show you where the different books are. He goes, you've got a concordance. Tyson's like, what's that? He's like, well, if you want to know verses about prayer, you just go back here and it says prayer. Then it lists all these verses about it. Tyson goes, I got the deluxe version. I mean, who knew? You know, like, this is awesome. It was great as Tyson was in our Bible study. Tyson was the first guy who was baptized right out here in our new building when we moved in. And uh, just to see God working in his life, his kids' lives, now they're in college and walking with the Lord. It's just awesome. But a concordance is a great thing. Commentaries, you, know, you can get some biblical commentaries that are fantastic. You can order them and have them shipped to you, or you can go online. You know, William Barclay's great commentaries, or the New American commentaries, or the life application commentaries. And a commentary is just hearing from somebody who's older, who's walked with the Lord a long time, what is their thought on this passage of Scripture? I want to I hear from that. And so that's a great way. Or questions. Ask questions. If you don't understand something, say, hey, you know, I want to hear. Somebody ask. Ask somebody at church. Great way to go in Bible study. Hey, church, this is where we ask questions. This is where we study the Word of God together. Every Sunday morning, right? We're in Hebrews 4 today. But every Sunday morning, we're in Scripture. Having your kids in Sunday school, right? I mean, preschool, children, student ministry, so that they can learn and they can grow. Community group. Have you ever noticed how Jesus took 12 disciples? He didn't just do one-on-one. -on -one. Why? Because he knew they're going to learn from each other. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And getting in a community group, and then a men's group or a woman, women's group, you know, so that you can learn. Men and women, we have different issues. Different things that we're facing that we can learn from one another. Bible study is important. And it's important for you and for everyone around you. It's important for you. It's going to shape your life. It's going to grow you as a disciple. And so often we're like, well, I don't have time for that. I've got reports to read. I've got business to do. I've got a career to follow. I, I've got kids to raise. And we're like, well, this is going to be the foundation and for us to say, I want this to be a priority for me. I want to learn and grow. God shapes our life to look like Jesus through his word. Have you ever noticed how Jesus, when you're reading the scriptures, Jesus was never in a hurry. Jesus 
right? He wasn't stressed out. He wasn't anxious. And yet, in 33 years, he accomplished more than all of us, right? <laughs> Changed the world. He loved all people. I mean, what if we could get to that point that we could live with that kind of confidence in God? What if we could get to that point that we weren't anxious or afraid or worried about tomorrow or the next day, just knowing that God is with us and God's going to shape us and God wants to use us? What if we could live with peace and with purpose? And that's why every day we need to hear from God in his word. But then allow God to use us. If there are people in your life who have spiritual questions, give them a Bible. I think a lot of times we're trying to answer all these questions and so often we go, here, I just want to give you a present. Here you go, this is a gift. And I, just take it, read it. If you have questions, let me know. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. You may be the only Bible some may ever read. So let your life be true to God's word. Let your life be true to God's word. Here's this verse, 2 Timothy 2, 15. Do your best. I love that, right? We're not perfect, but do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. You know, when I do a funeral service, uh, I always ask the people. Uh, I'm like, hey, can you, can you give me your, your dad's Bible? Uh, or can you give me your husband's Bible or your grandmother's Bible? I'd, I'd love to read scripture from their Bible. And a lot of times when I get that Bible and it's like marked up, you know, with underline or it has notes in the margin or it says this is what I'm praying about. And you just kind of go, yeah. Man, they lived their 70, 80, 90, 100 years on this earth and they were grounded. And you could just see it. You could see it in their family. You could see it. And so I just encourage us in that way. There's a dad here in our church, and he's got two boys that are in elementary school. And what he's done is he's taken two Bibles, and he has them at his office, and he, he just leaves them right, by, right on his desk. And he wrote the name of one son in the front of one and the other son in the front of the other. And he goes, you know, when God speaks to me or God brings a verse to light, I, I just go in and I, I underline that verse or I'll write a note, you know. I just write their names, write a note. And he goes, well, you know, when they're 18 years old, I'm, I'm going to just go, hey, guys, congratulations on graduating, but I, I've been wanting and preparing this for you. And you know, you're going off to college now, but I want you to be set in stone. I want you to have a firm foundation, and I want you to know what I've been praying for you for these 18 years, and that you would know God, and you would walk in his word and walk in his truth. And guys, the, the goal, the goal is the relationship. It's not the check marks, you know. I mean, it's great to have badges, and it's great to get check marks, but, but the goal is the relationship. It, it, this is leading us to Jesus, the author, perfecter of our faith. And I don't know where you are today, but I know this, God's here. And I know this, God loves you. And he has a plan for you. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your marriage. He has a plan for your family. He has a plan for you. Would you trust him? Maybe today is the day of salvation. You know, Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. Maybe today is a day when you go, you know what? I'm going to stand before God one day. I want to be ready. And so today I'm making a commitment. I'm taking a next step in my spiritual journey. Maybe today God's saying, hey, it's time to be baptized. It's time to follow me. Maybe today God's saying, hey, it's time to really, really dive into my word. Be a part of growing deeper in faith. I want to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. Just for a moment. What's God saying to you today? How's God speaking to you? So, Father God, here we are, your disciples. Search our hearts today, Father. God, we just admit we live in a busy world. We get fast paced. We've got all kinds of things we want to accomplish. And, and yet, Father, today, I pray that we be set in stone. And we make Christ the foundation of our life. In your word, that we would listen and we would follow. So, Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts right now move in this moment 
challenge us, change us, shape us as your disciples today. We love you, Father. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen, amen. Guys, after the service, I'll be here. There'll be people on our, our A6 guys or wives. If you want to talk with somebody or pray with somebody, that's, that's what church is, okay? Come and just say, hey, pray with me or pray for me. This time I invite our ushers to come forward. It's a chance for us to give back, a chance for us to invest in God's kingdom and for God's glory. If you're a first-time guest, all we ask is that you give us your communication card and drop that in the basket. If you have a prayer request, drop that in as well. We will pray with you and pray for you. So let me say a short prayer for us. Father, speak to our hearts. God, speak this morning, Father, and let us hear from you and let us trust you, follow you, and become men and women after your heart. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and we give. Amen.